Thank you for joining us today for the Stations of the Cross. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, I try hard to follow your voice in my heart and share your love with others. Sometimes I don't, though. Sometimes I take the gift of my life for granted. Sometimes I forget that everyone I meet is your beloved child, too. I cut myself off from others and from you. I cut myself off from life. But even then, you don't stop loving me. You want me to return to you. You reach out like a shepherd, like a father, waiting for his pro prodigal son. When I look at your image here on the cross, I see that love. I see love poured out for your friends. Help me to rejoice in your friendship and accept the love and forgiveness that you share with all of your friends. Teach me to love as you love. As I walk with you on that way of great love, the way of the cross. Uh, the first station, Jesus is condemned to die. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus stands before those who hold his earthly life in their hands. He knows suffering lies ahead. He could lie about himself and escape that suffering. He tells the truth, though, because he loves us, and love stands for truth. Jesus, so many times trying to be truthful just seems just too hard. If I'm completely truthful about my sins, I will have to suffer consequences for my wrongdoing. If I'm completely honest about my plans, I may face restrictions that will keep me from doing what I want. If I'm really open about who I am and what I think, some people might change the way they think of me. They might decide I'm not very good. In this first station, I see you stand before your accusers in truth out of love. Help me be led by love too. May knowing that you love me as I am strengthen me to be honest about myself. May my love for others help me see that they deserve the truth from me. The second station, Jesus carries his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Jesus has been beaten and mocked by the Roman guards. Now a huge heavy beam is laid brutally on his shoulders. Jesus carries the great weight of sin as he begins his journey to Golgotha, where they would crucify him. He bears it willingly, for love bears all things. Jesus, I may be young, but I've already learned that life brings many challenges and burdens. In a way, these burdens are, the, are our own crosses that all people must carry through life. Sometimes I condemn myself to carry a cross. I get myself into tough situations that have tough consequences. But at other times, life just lays a heavy cross on my shoulders. I didn't ask for it. I don't want it, but it's there. And it's hard to bear, especially because I don't understand why it's there. I see you carry your cross with love. Help me say purpose in the cross I'm carrying today. Help me find a loving way to bring good out of this cross. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The streets of Jerusalem are narrowing and winding. Crowds have gathered to watch Jesus make his way to the place of crucifixion. Under the weight of the cross and pressed by the crowds, Jesus stumbles and falls. Jesus, the cross you carry, it's not just made of wood. 
It's made of the sadness of the world's sin and all of its consequences in human suffering. That is a heavy burden to carry, and under its weight you fall. Sin brings me down to the ground, too. I may think I can handle it at first, but after a while I find that my lies, my casual cruelty, or my closed heart is making it hard for me to walk upright. I fall. I see you under all the weight, but I also see you that you refuse to let the heaviness of the world's sin keep you down. You rise and keep walking out of love. Help me rise too and find the path of love once again. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. When Jesus was a baby, his parents took him to the temple. There a prophet told Mary that a sword would pierce her soul. Seeing her beloved son now wounded, weak and walk into an unjust death. Mary feels that sword tear out her heart. Jesus, amid the crowd filled with mocking, curious, and indifferent faces, one face stands out. It is the face of your it is the face of your sorrowful mother, Mary. She held you close as a baby, searched for you when she thought you were lost in Jerusalem, and was there with you as she changed as you changed water into wine. As she has so often in the past, Mary stands near you now. But this moment is different from all the others. She can do nothing for you now. She can only watch in grief because she loves you so very much. I suppose all parents must sometimes look at their own children with the same kind of sadness. When we are sick, when we are running down harmful paths, when we refuse to listen, our parents feel it because they love us. I see you stop to give your mother comfort. Help me stop on my journey and let my parents in to give me comfort. Help me love them by being open to their love and support. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The cross only gets heavier with every step. The guards pull a man named Simon out of the crowd and put the crushing weight of the cross on his shoulders. Not that they care about Jesus, but they have a job to do. They have to get him to the place of crucifixion. Jesus, I wonder if the man named Simon knew you at all. He wasn't one of the 12 disciples. Maybe he had never even heard of you before that day. He didn't volunteer to help you either. He was forced to do it by armed soldiers. But despite all that, despite being a stranger, pulled in to help against his will, for a moment, a burden on you was lifted. Every day, my life puts me in the presence of people I've never met before and never will see again. At school, at work, at the mall, at a game. As I see your burden lifted by a stranger, help me remember that every action and word I speak to a stranger can either lighten their daily load or make it heavier. Help me approach them with love and help me gratefully accept any kindnesses that are offered to me. Sixth station, Veronica wipes Jesus' face. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. After Jesus was arrested, the guards put a crown of thorns on his head. The long, sharp thorns pierced his skin on his scalp and drew blood. Now, hours later, the blood, sweat, and filth have covered Jesus' face. Veronica reaches out in love. Jesus, I must admit that suffering frightens me. I don't mean just the idea of my own suffering, but it's the suffering of others that I find difficult to face. I don't like to see people I love in pain. When someone I know endures great suffering, it is hard to know what to say or do. 
Sometimes when I'm faced with that kind of suffering, I just want to go far away until it's all over. Sometimes people are changed by illness or the pains of age or grief. It's hard to recognize them under their scars of their pain. I see Veronica reaching out to you. Others are frightened off by your suffering. Some don't know what to say or do. Veronica sees through the blood and the dirt. She does a simple thing. She cleans your face. Help me to reach out as Veronica did and to not be overcome by my fear. Help me to be strengthened by your love and to recognize your faith and in, in the suffering of others. The seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Just a few days ago, people were cheering when Jesus entered the city. The feeling is different now. Now Jesus is condemned to t as a criminal, and hardly anyone seems to be on his side. He falls again. Does anyone care? Jesus, I see people fall every day. Kids I know struggle in school. They make mistakes, they lose games, and they forget their lines on stage. They have family problems and dread going home at night. My parents get stressed because, out, uh, because of all of the things they have to do. They lose their temper with me. Sometimes I deserve it, sometimes I don't. When I think about all of this, sometimes I feel let down by the way people disappoint me. I watch them fall, and it makes me angry or feel superior, or even laugh at them. I see you're surrounded by pressure and cruelty, falling down under the weight of all of it. I'm sorry to see you fall. When I see other people fall in my life, help me remember you and be more understanding with them. When, I do, when those I know fall, help me react with compassion and desire to help. May love move me to care. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. As Jesus preached and taught during his ministry, his apostles were at his side. Now they were gone, nowhere to be seen. But along the sad road, a small group follows Jesus. It is a cluster of women from Jerusalem, walking behind him in tears for what he has endured and for his death that comes closer with every step. Jesus, Jesus, although you are exhausted and weak, you have strength enough to speak to the women who are weeping for you. You tell them not to shed tears for you, but for themselves and for their children. Following you can some following you can sometimes be difficult. I know that real love can be hard sometimes. Forgiving is hard. Putting up with someone's mistakes and weakness is hard. It is hard being faithful to a friend or family member and supporting them when I have other feelings to do or when the situation makes me feel uncomfortable. Being your friend, Jesus, I can be a challenge. I see you gently warning the women of hard times ahead. I listen to those words and understand what they mean for me. Help me be faithful and keep you following you in love. The ninth station, Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Jesus has been arrested, unjustly condemned, whipped, and beaten. He has been forced to bear the means of his own death on his back. His friends have disappeared. He falls again.
Jesus, your journey on this hard on this hard road is a journey of pain and struggle, but most of all, it is a journey of love. It is hard to see this from the outside. Someone who doesn't understand sees nothing but a shattered man falling under a terrible load on a Jerusalem street. But there is more to it than this, I know. There is love. You endure all this because you love us. You suffer because you love me. It's hard for me to fully realize that love involves suffering. I doubt anybody truly understands the mystery of how love and suffering are joined. But through your journey, I see how true this connection is. I see you fall, broken and weak. But in this pain, I also see a love that astonishes me and gives me hope. Help me love as you love. Help me accept the suffering that comes with real love. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Jesus has passed through the city gates out to the place of crucifixion called Golgotha. Wooden beams are stuck in the ground, awaiting the cross piece that he's been carrying on his back. On this hill, that means skull place, he's stripped of his clothes, all is ready. Jesus, you came into the world to share the good news of God's love. You forgave sins, healed the sick, and brought the dead back to life. And now you stand, God made human, totally exposed to the world. The world that came into being through your own word. A world that has now turned on you and is preparing to put you to death on a cross. How could they not have recognized you? How can people be so blind to goodness and love? Why does it scare us so? I see you, the Lord of creation standing weak and vulnerable before your own creation, which has closed its eye to truth. Open my eyes to your love. Help me be open to the many ways you are acting in my life every day. Help me to respond to your voice as it calls me to love. Eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The noonday sun burns down on Golgotha. Nails are pounded through Jesus' wrist. Ropes quickly pull the cross pieces up into place. More nails pierce through Jesus, now through his feet. Your cross is in place bearing love. Jesus, is this really what love looks like? That's not what the world tells me. The world outside tells me that love is about happy feelings, romance, and pleasure. As you hang on the cross, surrounded by people mocking you, gambling for your clothes, giving you vinegar when you say you are thirsty, it changes the way I think about love. I see you suffering on the cross, suffering so much that you cry out, Father. I also see you are suffering for one reason, only you love us. You want to pour out forgiveness for, of our sins and open the doors to eternal life for us. See you accept this cup offering out of love. Help me see love in the cross. Help me see how much I need this love. Teach me though your cross how to love as you have loved. Teach me that true love is what I have been made for. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. Jesus hangs on the cross as the hours crept by. It is harder and harder for him to breathe. One of the thieves crucified alongside mocks him. The other defends him. Jesus promised this good thief that today he will be paradise with him. After three hours, Jesus breathes his last. Jesus. 
Jesus, forgive me for my sins. All along the way, there were many people involved in bringing you to this point. Some betrayed you, others arrested, tried and convicted you. Some whipped you or nailed you to the cross. Hundreds stood by and watched. All but a few of your friends abandoned you and hid. But beyond all this, a whole ungrateful world brought you to Golgotha. And sadly, I have to admit that I'm a part of that world. I see you collapse and lifeless on the cross. Sin is there with you. But your response to sin was not anger, was not anger or rejection of the world. You accepted the whole world and everything about it, even in si sinfulness, in order to heal it. I'm part of that world. Help me see that through your cross, I am healed and set, through, set free. The thirteenth station, Jesus taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. For a moment, the world went dark. Thunder rolled across. Jerusalem, Jerusalem and the earth shook. Something had happened. The world had changed. But now, no one knows that. The guards have left the crucified to his family. A tomb is made ready. In the deep sadness, those remaining watch Mary cradle her son in her arms. Jesus, this moment at Golgotha is even more dark and bleak than others. Those who were carrying your lifeless body probably had many thoughts just at this moment. They might have been thinking of your laughter and wisdom, of a time they had shared a meal with you, or of a moment when you had shared them that even their sin, that their sins, even their worst sins were forgiven. Your mother Mary must have thought about all that had been promised, and once again the sword pierced her heart. All of them were probably confused and hurt, wondering what would, what could happen next. But in the midst of all this enormous pain, they continued to serve you, quietly out of love. I see you cared for, for by those who love you. Help me to do the same. Help me to serve humbly and quietly out of love. The 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. In a cave in the side of a hill, Jesus' body, wrapped in linens, is laid on a shelf carved from rock, and a stone is rolled across the opening of it, this tomb. Guards are stationed, and the mourners drift away. Night falls with a heavy silence. Jesus dying is a scary thing. It is sad to reflect on your unjust death. It is scary to think about my own death and the death of those around me. I just don't like to think about such things. Could a stone rolled across a tomb, darkness and silence, could this really be the end? Your journey to the cross seems to end in sadness. Sometimes when I am trying to understand and to follow your way of love, I feel frustrated and sad too. It is hard for me to see the point or to see how good could come out of it. I see you lying in the tomb, and faith tells me that death is not the end. As I watch in sadness, help me remember your promise of eternal life. Help me live, trusting that in your love lies joys and peace. joy and peace. 